All right, let's take a, a gander at this one. <coughs> How, say again? I want to do the square root property. Now, here's what tells us the square root property is the ideal method. <coughs> this is the only place I have my variable, right? Notice that it is contained inside the square. Get it by itself. So 2x minus 7 squared equals what? The square is by itself. I can now do what? The square root property. There we go. Hit it. Plus or minus. I know I'm supposed to have two solutions for most of these. So, what do I have on my left side? That's 2x minus 7 equals plus or minus. What's wrong? Stop talking like that. <laughs> it equals 3. Then, um, uh, I've got to get, see, now this is where you got to get the x by itself. 7 plus. Time to wake up. Yes, this was really all just a dream. Now you have to wake up and go to math class. <laughs> <laughs> get x by itself, so i got to move the 7 over. Where does it go? In front of the plus or minus. In front of the plus or minus. That's a positive 7, plus or minus 3, and then do what? So I'm going to divide this whole thing mm -hmm. by 2. Am I done? No. no. Notice that if I didn't have the minus here, I just had 7 plus 3 over 2. Can I do more with that? I can. So I've got to separate this. <coughs> so I get x equals 7 plus 3 divided by 2, or x equals 7 minus 3 over 2. So what do I get with 7 plus 3 over 2? X equals 5. <coughs> or x equals what? 7 minus 3 is 4. Divided by 2 is <coughs> 2. <coughs> and we're all awesome with that, right? Now, if I try to check this on the graphing calculator, because, I mean, why not, right? If I do y equals, I have parentheses 2x <coughs> minus 7 squared plus 1. And the other line is y equals 10. How many intersection points did I just see there? It's kind of hard to see, but you do have two intersection points. Yes? Mm -hmm. Go to your table. Because my, my solutions are nice. They're 5 and 2, right? If I go to my table, so second graph, you can find out where these y values are the same. Look at this. When x is 2, the y values are both 10. When x is 5, they're both 10 as well. Do you all agree? Pretty cool. Did you know that you could have done that on the last example that we had? The last example was x plus 6 squared equals 5. It's going to be difficult for you to find where they intersect because the solutions were weird and wonky last time, right? Because we were decimals. But you know what you can do? <coughs> you have control. If you change the table setup by pressing second window, you can change your independent variable, which is your x, to ask. Just trust me. If you turn it to ask and go back to your table, there's nothing here. This table, when you set it to ask, will only be populated with what you tell it to put in there. So if I want to know what is happens when x is 5, well, that wasn't right. What did I say my solutions were? There were negative 6 plus the square root of 5. What did I do here? That was a plus, right? I guess I made a mistake. And it's being recorded. Ah, see, now it works out. See how the y values are the same? What was my other solution that I had? It was negative 8 point something, right? But that came from negative 6 minus 
the square root of 5. And it gives me the same y value. So we could have gotten it by seeing where it intersected by doing second uh, calculate or second trace to get the calculate menu. We could also fill in these x values to find, <coughs> you know, to, to check our answers. Not to have it do it, but to have it check. Does that make sense? <coughs> 